If you can make sure also that your cameras are off and your microphones are off, you'll get a chance to um, discuss and, and hopefully get a chance to ask any questions as well if you wanted the, with the microphone, if you can have them off for now. OK, ladies and gents, let's get started then. Um, so welcome to EPQ lesson for Block D, Extended Project Qualification. For those of you who don't know, my name is Mrs Brooker. Um, not only am I the person that leads Extended Project, but I'm also head of year 12, so I'll be your head of year next year as well. Um, there's not just me this year teaching extended project qualification. I think Mr. Dale and Mrs. Hurrell are also timetabled to teach EPQ. I'm not sure which block we're all teaching in, so you might get me or you might get one of those. It all just depends on the block system. So let's get started. As we go through this, if you have any questions that you um, want answering, you can ask it as and when. OK, don't mind you asking near the beginning or you can wait until the end. I may have answered a lot of those questions by the time you get um, to asking it. Um, you can either put your hand up and then we can unmute you. Or if you would prefer to just put it in and type it into the chat, we can do that. You don't have to wait until the end and it can be a question about something that I've said within these slides. So it's going to be a bit of information overload. And I do apologise for that. Um, but it is going to be information that you need to set up with wanting to do EPQ next year, as well as um, your summer tasks. So first of all, what is EPQ? Some of you might sit there having zero clue as to what EPQ is. Others might have a bit more of an idea. All in all, it's an independent project that you choose a topic for um, and you write either an essay or you create an artefact um, where you answer a question or you kind of discuss a debate or a topic. Um, specifically on whichever one you've done. You kind of create this big project um, from start to finish, including um, presentations, writing things up, doing a whole load of research um, for it. You get teacher guidance throughout the whole year. Um, it will be quite heavy on the teacher guidance in the first month, 
because we're making sure you're on the right tracks, your topics are appropriate, all those kind of things. You'll have deadlines, big deadlines to meet from us, and then hopefully you'll make and create yourself miniature deadlines to keep yourself on track as well. Um, but that is what, in a nutshell, it is. An independent project that you choose, you plan, you write, and you create. Um, and obviously at the end, we all present it as well. So let's move on to that. So why do it? Now, a lot of people do ask me this question. It's not part of your, you don't have to do EPQ. You do your three A-levels and then you can add EPQ as an additional thing. So some people are like, oh, I don't want to do it. You don't have to do it. But it is something that I believe if you have a passion for something, it is something you might want to do. Only ever do the EPQ on a topic that you are interested in. There's no point doing EPQ on something you are not interested in because you will not be able to focus, you'll get bored, you won't want to be motivated to write the essay or to create the project, whatever it is. <clears throat> so it should be something that you're passionate about. It can be something that uh, relates to a subject you don't do anymore. You know, you've gone down from something like, I don't know, between five and ten different subjects for some of you down to three. So EPQ can be something that you used to really like, subject that you used to like doing, but it's not one that you've picked for your three A levels. So it could be an art project. It could be. Related. Um, you know, it, it, it can be a subject that you no longer study. And it can be a topic on whatever you want to study. You're going to develop your independent, your research and your organisational skills. Those three are the key skills you need and you will develop over the course of the year. Um, you, The amount of research you have to do is quite a lot. And we're talking about researching cleverly and smart research rather than just printing off 10, 20 pages off a website. Here's my research. I've highlighted a few bits in it type of thing um, is looking at different types of research out there, finding research and information yourself, you know, going out and asking people questions and interviewing them, getting research that way in a primary way. Um, independent because you're the one running it we will guide you we will make sure you're on track we will challenge you if you're becoming a bit lazy and not getting things done but all in all you lead it if you don't do enough you will struggle and then you will not have a finished project and therefore you won't have the best grade that you should be able to get and that kind of links back to organization if you are one of those students that you think, you know, I could do this, but I'm not really that organised, we'll be teaching you how to be organised. It will be something that you will need for your A-levels anyway, um, but it's something that we kind of expect and need you to be working on very quickly in EPQ. Um, lots of people ask me, do universities accept this? Is there any point in doing it? Yeah, definitely. You don't have to do EPQ, but if you really want to and you're thinking of universities, they do accept EPQ. OK, they 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 like it. Some some unis would like you to be doing your EPQ on the field that you're planning to study at university, but it's not a necessity. You don't have to do that. Um, and a lot of it is to do with the fact that it doesn't matter what the topic is It's your research. It's your independent skills. It's those things about you that you're developing during your EPQ that universities are looking for. Um, and that includes apprenticeships and work as well, because in the end, um, they they really want you to talk about something more than just your grades. And if you haven't got anything outside of school, something like an EPQ project, something where you're leading it and you're passionate about, it's going to be an interesting talking point. Um, it's worth half an A-level in UCAS points. So some universities will say you need to have A, an A-star and a um, two A's and an A-star, let's just say, for the course. And then they see that you're doing EPQ. And some universities will go, actually, instead of having two A's and an A-star, you can just have three A's or th uh, two A's and a B as long as you get an A in EPQ. 
So some universities change up their expectations and their requirements. Um, some will just talk about UCAS points, which really help if you've got an A-level, um, an EPQ in there, sorry, which is worth of half an A-level. So it's really beneficial. All in all, if you end up leaving sit form and you go off and you just end up working or you go to apprenticeship, um, UCAS points and that kind of stuff is not going to be as important to you. But the skills, the experience of an EPQ will help you. And I really would say highly recommend talking to um, students who have done EPQ and who have done it well um, about how they feel about the work that they have to do in year 13 and what they're going to be expected to do at university because all in all EPQ is a mini dissertation it's a mini university dissertation if you know anyone that's gone to uni a lot of them were in their final year everyone's pretty much have to write some form of dissertation which is a monster project all done independently with tutor guidance that's what this is just a miniature version of it so I've mentioned some of the skills, so I'm not going to read through every single one of these, but I'll put it up there for you to have a look at. Um, creativity, if you choose to do um, an artefact, which I'll go through in a moment, um, if you choose to do a kind of practical piece instead of an essay, then you have to be creative and you've got to have a skill. Um, you get to choose your own topic, no matter what it is, what style of project to do, your topic, your choice which leads on to your decision making, okay? You have to decide how you're going to do things, when you're going to do things, how much time you're going to spend on certain things. And really, you have to make those decisions and try and stick to them. We're there to support and guide you, but really, it's up to you. You're in the driving seat for that. Um, you are going to develop your skills of initiative and hopefully enterprise where you will get a chance to think there's more to research than looking at an internet website. So books, asking people, articles, looking at vlogs and videos and podcasts that people have done. Um, you know, all of those kind of things. It's using your ideas and your initiative as to which piece of research is going to get you the best bit of information. Planning is so important. That kind of links in with the organisation. You have to be able to manage your time. Um, you have to be able to look at your deadlines and manage how to fit those in, what you're doing on a week by week basis and how you're going to fit that into your life with your other three subjects as well. And include that includes like deadlines when you've got drafts to do and things like that. You are going to develop your skills in analysing things critically, looking at things, making sure that they are appropriate, making sure that they um, are reliable. You're going to be justifying and evaluating work that you think that might, you know, someone might have done. You thought, actually, this is really bias. Um, you know, being able to formulate those kind of discussions is really important, and you'll be learning to do that in EPQ. The other one is the presentation. I get lots of questions about presentations. You'll be presenting your project to me and a small group of people, usually people in the same EPQ class as you. Um, sometimes it can also be people that you have chosen as your friends to be your um, audience. Uh, you have to have an audience. You have to do a presentation because your verbal skills, your uh, skills on interacting with people and presenting ideas, all of those get marked in your EPQ as well. OK. I'm just going to pause just in case there's a few questions and get a quick drink. So I could spend a whole lesson literally on this. What can you do your EPQ on? First of all, it's got to be something you're interested in. I said it so many times, I'm going to keep saying it because students that are like oh I kind of like football and then they try and do an EPQ on I kind of like what they'll find is it's really really difficult to motivate themselves to do anything in terms of research and actually putting things together um, it's got to be something you are super interested in this is just a tiny drop in the water of the kind of topics I have come across in the last three years of doing EPQ here at Shenley. We've had students, you know, I'd say 95% of the topics are topics that are very unique to that person. 
Um, I would say there are some topics like criminology, uh, psychology of serial killers, um, gender and sports, that kind of stuff. Those are topics that are done often, but it doesn't stop anyone from doing them again. You're allowed to do the topics again and again, because really it's your topic. You might have a different question about gender and sport than the last three people that did it. So we've had um, have a have a look at this, maybe write down a few that are interesting to you. If you have any questions while I talk about topics, please chuck them into the, the chat or put your hand up and ask them more than happy for you to be doing that as well. So, you know, we've had things along the lines of justice system. We've had things along the lines of um, uh, discrimination in sport, looking at, sorry, just putting my chat up so I can see. Um, people have talked about how reality TV is affecting celebrities in a negative way, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, yes, Eloise, I am sharing my screen. Can you see it, everybody? Because I can see it. Just double check. Can you let me know, ladies and gents, if you can see my screen? OK, we've got lots. Um, Eloise, it might be a matter of just coming out and coming back in again and see if that works. All right, so in terms of the topics, hopefully that worked for you, Eloise. Um, if not, it has been recorded, but um, and I will eventually, at the end of the day, end of this session, I will put the whole PowerPoint on the on Teams for everybody as well. Um, Caitlin, it can be quite broad, but the problem with it being too broad is then you have got too much to talk about. So, um, for example, students who went for gender and sport, I asked them to maybe specify a sport or I asked them to specify a um, decade to focus on, or an area within that, like pay to focus on. Pay, probably not so much, because obviously there's not 5,000 words you can talk about that. But yeah, um, being quite specific is good. Being um, too specific will, may also limit you. So for example, if I have a look at these topics and pick out someone that did uh, so for child development, for example, I've had students focus on child development through the brain, uh, brain development. Others have chosen child development in terms of language development. Um, someone looked at the brain through child development based on effects of trauma. Um, some have looked at things like the social aspects on there as well. Um, so, you know, human behaviour is really big. Even psychology is really big. So some people, lots of people like them focused on serial killers specifically. Um, others focused on, you know, some students have talked about Formula One, but they talked about the safety in Formula One. So it is better to um, be quite specific um, rather than too broad, because too broad means, you know, for example, film soundtracks on its own, is a massive topic but if you talk about film soundtracks in horror movies that's a bit more specific and you still got lots to write about and lots of areas to go into but it is more specific i hope that helps caitlin um does oxford expect an epq in the subject you're going to <laughs> possibly i'm not 100 percent sure on oxbridge some of them like you to have so if you they know you're going to go off and do i don't know medicine at oxbridge um, they might say to you, well, we, you know, they, they won't say it to you, but if you've done an, an EPQ on um, the development of certain vaccines or medicines or something like that, then that might play in your favour. But you don't have to. I would, if I were you, look, maybe spend the summer, have a quick look on their websites. Um, and on Unifrog, because Unifrog has it all on there as well. And just look and see, because some might say we would prefer if you had an EPQ on something close to what the field you're studying. Others don't mind, mostly because it's more about the skills that you've learned doing the EPQ. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Right, okay, so thank you, Eloise and Shannon. Um, 
how different EPQ has to be from the subjects you're studying. It doesn't. You can do, uh, you can be studying physics and do your EPQ on physics, but your coursework for the subjects you're studying cannot be the same as your EPQ coursework. OK, so it's it's uh, to be honest, personally, I would love it if people didn't do something towards their subject because it's something different. It's something that hopefully you're passionate about. But if you're super passionate about, um, I don't know, let's say physics, which lots of you probably are, then actually there's nothing stopping you from doing your EPQ on physics. It might be related to something like dark matter or particular particles or I don't know, something um, science related um, like that. So it doesn't have to be too different, but you can't have the same piece of work as coursework. So, for example, as a better example, actually, film, if you take in film studies, you have to write a script. Now, if you choose to write a script in your EPQ, it cannot be the same script that you use in your coursework for film studies. OK, um, so that that would be quite important. Yes, Sophia, you can talk about the evolution of something. Yeah, someone did the evolution of. Uh, I want to say bikes, but it's more like racing bikes and stuff. So he actually did about you know, um, motocross bikes or something like that. I can't remember now. Um, so you can talk about the evolution of something very specific. Um, we've done things. Someone's done gymnastics, but then she kind of actually as through as she was doing some research, she came into more about the abuse within gymnastics and the way that um, the the girls, especially the girls, are treated in gymnastics and how they're viewed by people and their coaches and stuff. So it can be very, very specific. Um, it can be related to a subject you're doing, but you can't have the same coursework. Um, and yes, you can definitely do the evolution of something. We've had students who have done, if I have a quick look, I might be able to some people have done the uh, like evolution of um, uh, uh, what was it? What's your chocolate cake? So and it sounds really kind of like well, okay. I was thinking more evolution of like man, but actually, what she created was an artifact, and she looked at the different ingredients, and she looked at the processes, and how that's moved and moved on. Even like of the humble pie, you know, lots of stuff like that, or bread. Um, so you really can think of lots of different ways of doing it. And it's got to be something you're interested in. A student did video games and music on there and she actually did. She talked about specific types of video games. So again, you've got so many different video game topics and genres within video games. So she talked about something specific and then she looked at just the music within that. And as a music student as some, and someone who loved video games, she found that a really good combination to do. Um, feminism in Disney has been a really fun one to do. Students have looked at the male and the female protagonists in Disney movies and looked at how they're portrayed and how they're treated. Um, and they've looked at, you know, the princesses in Disney movies and how that's changing so the evolution of um the princess isn't the disney princess or something like that rap and politics is an amazing one mixing music with politics and music with current affairs so many different things you can do um and there are so many more and it might, at this point you might be going oh my god my brain's going to explode because there's too many topics but by the end of this session hopefully you'll have a bit more of an idea of what you might want to be doing so continue asking the question, ladies and gents. I'm just going to move the slide on. Um, hopefully you've had time to either note down something that you quite thought was quite interesting, or at least it's, it's kind of inspired or sparked something in you going, oh, I quite like that. Right. So different types of projects you can do. There's two main types of project which I'll talk about, which is the dissertation and the artifact. You've probably heard me use those words already. So the dissertation, which is what majority of students choose, is a theoretical essay, which is five to six thousand word. And it's um, usually a debate or an argument or an, a, a discussion of some form based on your topic. You write an evaluation at the end and you present your um, whole topic. OK, you don't present the actual essay, you don't read the essay to me, but you talk about what you did, how you went through it, all that kind of stuff. That's your presentation. The other option is the artefact. 
Now, the artefact is something physical. Um, so I've had artwork. So last year, a student um, painted six different canvases and each one of the canvases that, and pictures that she painted represented six, six different elements of mental health. So one was focused on anxiety, one was talk, one focused on um, depression um, and so on and so forth. Um, so she had her topic, she had her question, she had her idea and she turned her actual piece of work, her discussion of it all, into an artwork piece. Students have come up with music work. So the Disney one, really good one, student who did um, looked at how the music when a hero turns up and when a villain turns up and when they exit. And she looked at that, analysed that, researched all of that, and then she created her own and she composed her own piece of music um, that showed when a hero was entering a um, scene in a Disney movie and when a villain did. Um, so loads of different things you can do. Now, that still comes with a little bit of a written report, a really short one, because you still have to write an introduction, you still have to write an abstract and an evaluation. Um, and you still, for both of them, you have to be able to look at the research you've done and analyse and critique that research. And you have presentations to do. And the difference is, both of these, you will need to spend time, I would say a minimum of two hours per week, outside of lesson time, especially when you get into the real kind of uh, in-depth research and writing of it and creation of your work at least two hours per week outside of your lesson time doing this. I personally believe it's extra for artefacts. Because if you think about it, composing a piece of music is honestly going to take a lot more time than maybe writing an essay. We're used to writing essays. You do that in your GCSEs. So a lot of people use that as the familiar or the safe option. Artifact really, you need to have a really good skill, I believe personally, in order to take an artifact and do a really good job with it. If you want to do an artwork piece, it's really good to have some really good artwork. Although I do say that we had one student this year, um, he didn't take art, he wasn't overly fantastic at art, and yet his artifact was a piece of artwork that he did. And it was all about learning how to draw certain style of um, art and pictures so you know you can do it but it takes so much time when you're doing an artifact i think a lot more time doing an artifact than it is dissertation you still have to do the same amount of research you still have to write um part of a, an essay an introduction that kind of stuff but the artifact definitely takes a lot more time to do okay any other questions so far now the, dis the investigation and performance underneath is, and I've put it in big capital letters, it's very difficult and rare. Most people who start off with either investigation or performance kind of sidle it up to an artefact. Um, again, this is something that needs some exceptional circumstances before we consider yes for this particular one. Um, and when we get to it in September, you'll have the information for all of them but most people go with dissertation or artefact. I have seen students create their own mangas, comics. I have seen people do music, artwork, prototypes and models from DT. And at the same time, you know, they get A's and A stars and dissertations also get the top. Uh, would a good quality artefact get a higher grade than essay? Um, not necessarily, because the essay itself has to kind of be coherent, be a, a really good argument with discussion of your research you've done. Whereas the artefact is based on and, and the marks are more to do with the process, not with the final piece of artwork um, or the final artefact. It's the process, how you got from deciding which acrylics to use or what type of paint to use, to what canvas, to what brushes, to which style, you know, the process from the beginning to the final artifact that bit is extremely important more so than the final finished piece so i had a student who handed in a manga comic which when you're looking at it wasn't very good it didn't look very good it wasn't very artistic you could tell it was manga but you could also tell that it wasn't the most impressive piece of work 
But when you look at his research and you looked at the activity log and the work that went alongside it, you could see that he used certain camera angles, used certain expressions, tried to emulate certain styles based on the story that he was going through in his manga. And that actually, you know, as someone who was looking at the manga on its own, I looked at that and thought, oh, that's not very good. What has he been spending his time doing? And then I looked at that research he had been doing and he handed that in. And actually that itself helped improve the mark because I could see that he specifically chose this close-up angle of the, the eyes um, because it's part of the style of manga and all that kind of stuff. So he'd done this research and discussed it. Sometimes also a presentation helps to improve marks because you say things um, about a piece of work um, that you may not have been able to write in it. So, yeah, I guess that's probably my answer to that um, about the good quality artifact get a higher grade. It's harder to do the artifact, but it's not impossible to get eight grades. And a lot of people who do an artifact when they're organized and they've got the skill set and they've got the determination most students who do an artifact get very very high grades because of their skill set but it's so much more time okay um yes it will this is just a one-year course okay so I'll, just literally you just perfectly led me into the next slide this is a one-year course so by this time next year, you will be done with EPQ, usually around May time. So September to April, May is when how long this course runs. So around April time is when everyone should be doing their presentations. Everything like essay or final finished products will be handed in to me. Um, and as I'm marking them, you'll be doing your presentations. So the first six, I would say project proposal, task planning, research, and the main project draft, all of that gets done in the first term. Now, it sounds like a huge amount, and it is a huge amount to do, but you can't create, you can't write, you can't move a project forward without doing the research first. And that's going to be the priority tasks when you come back um, into the autumn term. So the project proposal is basically your idea, what you want to do, how you want to do it, your summary that you are writing, will help with this project proposal. And I'll go through that um, for your summer task in a moment. You have to plan your tasks, what you're gonna do, how long you think it's gonna take, where you're gonna find that information from, all that kind of planning. Every week, even right up until your presentation, pardon me, <clears throat> you will be um, filling out an activity log. And in that activity log, you're basically going to say how things are going that week, what you've done, what's left to do, any problems you came across, all that kind of stuff. Tons of research, so much research. Um, and then your main project draft, which is either your first draft of your essay, the majority of it done, or your drafts of your artefacts and your research. Um, the literature review can only be done once you've done your research because the literature review is basically looking at all the sources that you have used and researched and telling me how good they were for you, for you and your project. Were they biased? Were they reliable? Were they easy to find? Were they effective? Did they help your argument? That kind of stuff. After Christmas, you'll get um, some very detailed feedback on your draft piece, and then you'll spend the next couple of months finishing off, improving, uh, finalising your project and then handing that in with your written evaluation and then April, May time, as I said, is your presentation. There's going to be opportunities to get the highest marks involve independent work with limited guidance. That's limited guidance on top of the main guidance I give you. So if you know you've obviously got the detailed feedback for your draft, that's fine beginning in September, getting quite a lot of feedback and um, discussion starting your project, that's completely fine. But if after I hand you the draft and you come back to me two, three times more with another piece, another piece, another piece, how do I improve? How do I improve? Um, what you are then doing is limiting the top marks for independent work because you have to be able to do it with limited guidance, 
which doesn't sound fair, but trust me, in lessons and in your feedback, you get enough guidance to be able to do that. And we have lots of students that have got A's and A stars because they got the feedback from me and they just acted on that feedback and they were very organised. OK, so final uh, thing I want to go through with you. This is on the or Word document on the files in this channel. It's also going to be put onto the website as well, but I thought I'd show you it. I wanted to talk through it very quickly and then I want to leave the rest of the time that we have to um, any qu any more questions that you have. And thank you so much. Those of you been asking questions in the chat. I like to kind of answer them as we go along. So your summer tasks are these. I want you to choose four topics that you're interested in. So if I was doing this, my topics would be sign language, baking, horror movies and advertising. So I love those four things. Um, then for each of those four topics, I want to write on two subtopics. So sign language could be deaf community and should sign language be taught in schools? Baking could be, yeah, um, you know, is there a is there a need for developing more vegan meals or and it might be something to do with, I don't know, chocolate cakes? Um, horror movies might be to do with the final girl, you know, in horror movies, who that final girl is and why they're always a certain type and character type. And it might go for what kind of movies are out there for horror for kids. In my advertising, I might go with the role of representation of women in adverts. And my other one would be maybe advertising in toys. So one and two done like that. Now you're going to find that this turns into a larger mind map. If you don't like mind maps, you can literally list it down. Do one page per topic if that helps you better. OK, how you physically present this work to me in September is not as important as actually presenting the work to me. Um, so number three. Now you can write for each of these questions you can go with five points that you're going to discuss. Now, if you get to number three and you're like, well, I definitely don't want to do for me sign language and baking, then then narrow it down earlier than step four. OK, and so I can say for each of these points. So just imagine I'm thinking the advertising part. Let's look at the toys. Um, so points that I would then go into my mind map room to develop would be things like gender roles with toys and how they're advertised. Um, the representation of um, STEM subjects within toys, the science experiments and things like that. Um, I would look at maybe, um, and I would definitely look at the colours in gender neutral toys. Why are they pink Lego when they doesn't need to be pink Lego? That kind of stuff. So I'll be looking very much about gender and how toys are advertised to different genders. And one of my other points might be, you know, three to five points, I say, um, might be something like, you know, we are in a world where equality and gender equality is very, very important. Yet toys that are advertised to the next generation haven't changed. They're still very, very sexist. You're still going to see the girls playing with dolls, putting you know, changing nappies, pushing a pram around. And you're still going to see boys building and constructing things. Um, so that would be my that's where I would go, for example, if I chose that particular topic for toys. Um, once you've done that. So again, for each one, you want a few ideas. Now, once you get to the point where your mind map is kind of done, you've got your four big areas. Each of those areas has uh, some subtopics. Each of those subtopics have further things you could discuss. At that point, I want you to narrow down your four topics to two topics. OK, now, if you've got two topics, but you know there's um, one sub area in horror movies and one sub area in advertising that you quite like and you're still indecisive about, choose those. So choose two areas and write a 250 to 500 word summary on that topic. OK, um, and it sounds like a lot, but this summary is going to help you write your introduction to your um, EPQ project. Especially if you end up choosing the same project as you do your summary for. OK, now there are some people that said, Miss, I know exactly which one topic or I know there's two definite topics I'm going to choose from. Then that's fine. Skip one to three and move on to number four. You've got your two topics. Give me some outlines. Give me some points that you would do in these sub areas and then write your summary. OK, you can and feel free to 
<coughs> excuse me, begin your research. But if you begin your research, please, please note down where you got the information from, especially if it's a website, because what you're going to find is that websites get edited and moved along and changed quickly. So even if it's screenshots, uh, URLs copied, anything like that, if you want to do print offs, that's fine as well. But you need to be able to tell me where you got the information from. OK, <coughs> so that's your summer task. If you have any other questions, we've got about five to ten minutes um, to answer any further questions that you may have. Um, feel free to put your hand up and talk to me or just stick it right into the chat. I'm fine either way. Um, but that is the end of our EPQ session. I really hope I know it's a lot of information. I know like I've just talked at you most of the time, but I'm hoping that you're at least going away going, OK, right, I know what I need to do. This sounds interesting. Um, I'll have a go. Now, I don't want you to feel also that if you sign up for EPQ, you're stuck with it for the whole year. That's not the case. If you choose EPQ and you start it in September and by, I don't know, October, November, you're like, no, I can't handle this on top of my three A levels. It's too much work or anything like that. You are able to drop EPQ because you still have your three A levels. Your three A levels are the minimum you need to do for sixth form. EPQ, Mathematical Studies, Basketball Academy, Netball Academy, all of that addition to your three A levels. OK, so you have to do those three A levels. EPQ is an extra. Um, some people just do it because they really enjoyed the topic or what it is they want to do. And some people do end up dropping the subject. So I started with 78 in September last year. And out of those 78, only 51 of them I think 51 or 52 of them actually finished the project. The rest of them ended up dropping the um, EPQ at some points during the year. OK, right. So that is the end. If you would like to leave, feel free to. If you want to ask any questions, put it into the chat or put your hand up and talk to me. Um, you can also, and I'm just going to put it in now, uh, you can also email me any questions. So it's very specific and you don't want anyone else to see. I'm more than happy for you to email me any questions. My email address. Yes, it's correct. Right up there in the chat now. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for listening. I've got a Q&A session that I'm starting in about 15 minutes with Mr. Greenhouse. And that's overall questions for the whole of year 12 rather than specific to EPQ. So if you've got any more for those, we'll see you then as well. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, Sophia, you do need to tell me where you get the information from. Yeah, so if it's a website and all that kind of stuff, definitely. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, you can leave the lesson. It's fine. <coughs> it's um, an essay arguing a question or arguing a point. So it might be something like um, serial killers. Is it, you know, what so it could be something like what factors affect serial killers? or what factors, um, how has childhood trauma affected um, brain development? That kind of thing. It's like a question that you need to have ready. So it does kind of give information, but it is mostly a question that is a, that, almost like a debate question. Good, I'm glad you got that one. Thank you very much.